Hello and welcome to Sense in the City. I'm Ruby Bookaboo, the co-founder and your Sydney host, and I'll be taking you on some sensory adventures in and around the Emerald City. Tonight, I'm going to be talking to artist Esmeralda Raven Aponte. We'll be discussing some locations around Sydney where she finds her inspirations, where she exhibits, and where she goes to relax. We'll talk about her captivating surrealist artworks that flow from an inner dream landscape and are also influenced from her Colombian Amazonian heritage. We'll talk about another realm or sixth sense that she explores in her art. She will also share a family recipe and a song. So Esmeralda is at home right now and I'm guessing you're in front of the fireplace or will be later since it's such a cold night. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is a cold night tonight. So that's definitely the plan. So I wanted to start by asking if you remember the first time we met because it was an extremely Sydney moment. Yes, I do actually. It was during the Olympics. In 2000 at that party over the botanical gardens yeah it was it was where all the olympic teams like they it was the celebration i think it was the last night where they were letting loose remember it was a vip night we had muhammad ali that night there was chelsea clinton quite a few people it was a really nice time to be in sydney wasn't it it was there was a real festive feel about the whole thing because I remember uh, before the Olympics, everyone was saying, oh, it's going to be a mess. It's going to be a disaster. Yeah. It's going to be too many people. It's going to be chaos. But then when it, it was arrived, great. it was really good. Everyone was in a great humor. The weather was fantastic. There was this kind of yeah, feel good weather. kind of vibe. Everyone was in like party mode. It mm. was a really effective time. It was everyone just felt great when we first met. And I remember they had a roof and it midnight there were fireworks and the roof was see-through it was like this clear plastic yeah and suddenly you looked up and yeah. there's like you could see it all it was, lights it was a there. really great setup. yeah it was pretty impressive um it was really close to the opera house and so incredible and you're looking over the harbor near the art gallery near the art gallery that's it mm. yeah for anyone not from australia the art gallery is where they hold the archibald prize the most prestigious portrait prize in the country. I got into the Salon de Refuse, which then goes into the sister gallery, mm-hmm. and it's called the Next Best, and they choose 50 of the next that didn't get into that exhibition, but you get into the next one. The year that I entered, it had something like 15,000 entries, and so to be chosen to go into the Next Best, that was a big deal for me. With Inga, yeah, and that was my... my um, Inga Lilstrom, who's a beautiful singer. Yeah. Yeah, that was my introduction to the SH Irvin Gallery, which is where the observatory is sort of right under the bridge. Beautiful gallery. Um, and I've, I've exhibited there a few times now with a competition that they do every year called the Portuguese. And that is for female artists all around the country and New Zealand. Yeah, they have entries that are like fifteen to 20,000 people entering and they choose 50 artists to exhibit. So it's been a real honour to be able to exhibit with them. Like I've done it three times in a row mm. and I would like to do it again. Um, yeah, that's that's a, a special place for me. I really it, like that place. That place like literally like under the Harbour Bridge? Yeah. It's, it's such an incredible location. Like you could go and see the stars <laughs> in this incredible literally. building and then... Literally, and then go a bit further down and there's the gallery. And it is such a beautiful gallery. Like, it really is beautiful. I love that part of Sydney also because when I go to um, Sydney Dance Company, I often walk from Circular Quay around and under the Harbour Bridge and you look up and it's just so engulfing. Yeah. I'd like to talk about some of your works and how it's related to place. Um, But first... What are your favourite places in Sydney for your inspiration? We did mention the Botanical Gardens. That is a really special place. You know, I love to be able to go where I can be outside, surrounded by nature. Those things inspire me. Blue Mountains is a, is a beautiful place. Mm. That, that is an, an incredible place. And I, I, can, I can see it from my balcony. 
you know, That's I can incredible. see some of it. <laughs> yeah, so it's such an amazing view. Um, I see it in the distance. So I'm very lucky so to be Blue able Mountains to do that. For people who don't know Sydney. Yeah, about an hour 40 from the centre of the city. Yeah, and yeah. full of eucalyptus trees and gorgeous mountains and the oh, trees are rock formed. Yeah, Lura, and to be able to see the Three Sisters, which are those incredible mountains, mm. um, it's such a touristic spot, but it's not like crazy touristic, like where it's uncomfortable. It's actually mm. just nice. Everyone's out there enjoying good food, enjoying the nature and, you know, just the beautiful location. Some good markets there. Oh yeah. Uh, another place, you know, ocean. I love the ocean. I find the ocean really cleansing. Uh, Maroubra is a really beautiful place to go for that. Mm. I went for a walk down Maroubra Beach with Chris Cody for episode one of Sense in the City. Ah, oh, yeah, yes, yes. That's it. It's such a great beach. I love that beach. Other beaches I find get a bit too busy and. I don't know. It's it, when it's too busy, you can't enjoy it. You want to have a little bit of space. Yeah. Whereas I find Maribor, Maribor always has that. You can you can just go swimming and you you're not bouncing off fifty million people. So mm. I used to live in Coogee, um, and it reminds me probably when I met you, oh, I yeah. was living in Coogee, and that was really nice, a beautiful way to start the day. I remember yeah. waking up, going for a jog, diving into oh, the ocean, nice. going for a ten minute swim, yeah. and going to whatever cafe it was on the corner, having a Vegemite <laughs> on Turkish toast. That and a soy oh, latte, oh, wow. reading the paper and starting my day. That was like, <laughs> I would describe your work as surrealist. There's dreams and emotions mm-hmm. and there's magical figures and yeah. very colourful, very vivid, very evocative. How do you describe your art? Definitely surrealism. It just has such strong influence from dreams. Some dreams have this fantastical element to it. I guess it starts a lot from when I was a lot younger and, and I used to sleepwalk. Mm. And, and paint. I was well, paint. paint. Yeah, I was painting in my sleep and I would wake up covered in paint. They were more abstract when I was doing that. But it kind of got me started and I, I started selling them through someone who heard about it and was like an art dealer and decided to sell them. And that kind of got me started. But I had a style of my own, which I sort of felt I wanted to develop. And it had a real sort of uh, Spanish sort of um, almost tribal sort of Amazon, uh, you know, like my heritage. I could feel, I could see my heritage in my work. So I wanted to develop that a lot more. And I found that a lot of people started kind of comparing my work or similarities to Frida Kahlo and, you know, Diego Rivera or, you know, just those surrealists that had that Latino feel to their work. So you were born um, in Sydney, but both your parents are from My whole family Colombia. is from Colombia. Yeah, Colombia. from Colombia, she, South America. Yeah, what's it called? Chibcha tribe. Yeah, my great-great-grandmother, um... She was from the Amazon and she married a Spanish man. And it's in my blood. You know, I, I dream and I see things in my dreams that are so connected to nature. And I see these beings that are uh, not what you would see in this world. And I often dream about these things that are so uh, sort of like what you would see in a fantasy movie. And I would make, I make notes in the mornings and I, I take these notes with colours and descriptions, sometimes sketches, and I make a list of them. You know, I've got, I've got a list of how many I need to do. And, and if, it, if it accumulates too much, my dreams stop. I don't get them anymore. So I have to paint them. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, all, it's almost like I have to catch up or, you know, I'm not going to dream again. So I have to do these paintings. And then once I start doing them, then my dreams start up again and I'll, I'll be able to get more things to paint. So I kind of, I end up seeing the, the paintings before they, they start. Um, and I find that I get a lot of people, when I do commissions, they tell me their story and then I'll do my interpretation. But as they're telling me a story, I end up seeing the painting finished. 
and it's and then as I paint it, it becomes intuitive, mm. and little things start to get put in that you know I probably didn't see in the initial image, but as I'm working, it sort of starts to develop. So it's it, a lot of my work is is basically based off my sleep and my dreaming, and my sleep is kind of crazy. <laughs> And so, what do you think the importance is of dreams? I think dreams, it's, it's interesting. There's, there's, there really isn't a lot of understanding about what dreams are. You know, there's the idea that we do dream, you know, in relation to our experiences of our everyday life. And we carry that into our sleep. But there's also things like, I can't explain what I see. I can't explain these beings that I speak to or, you know, these incredible landscapes or unusual things that I see. I, I guess it's like I go to another place. And that's another theory, you know, dreams is like a doorway into another world, another realm. And I think that's where I go to. And I think that's where I experience these things and I'm supposed to bring them back to, I guess, paint them and, and show everyone. Let's talk about three of your works and discuss how the sense of physical and internal space link or juxtapose. To begin with, The Voyage. This painting is of a person in the hot air balloon crossing fields of agriculture, but the balloon is a light bulb. It's fun, uplifting, and somehow serene. That place I connect a lot to the Hunter Valley. Um, that's another beautiful place to go see. Uh, they also do hot air balloons, hot air ballooning there too. Which I is saw really that. Nice I would like to do that. Yeah. Do it. Oh, you have to do it. It's amazing. You <laughs> have, have you to get up it? really early in the morning. Yeah, I did. And you have to get up super early. Um, but it's it's worth it because you get to see the sunrise and and as it goes over the fields, you see all the wine fields and you'll see kangaroos jumping in the fields. <laughs> It's just beautiful. It is really, really beautiful. The Hunter Valley is about a three hour drive north of Sydney and one of the country's most famous wine regions uh, since the early 1800s. It's a very romantic setting with the heady scent of grapevines. Yeah, like it's, it's, a, it's definitely a romantic location. There's a lot of boutique, boutique stores there, you know, like specialty makers, you know, that specialize in cheese making or bakeries or, you know, great restaurants. Um, but it's all very food oriented. So I think the person that really loves good food and good wine, that's that's where to go. It's like a nice weekend holiday. Yes. Well, a lot of people do it for the weekend. You know, mm. they leave on Friday, leave work early Friday so they can drive down and then stay there for the whole weekend and hire a cabin. And then afterwards, you know, go home feeling great mm. with a whole bag of stuff that they've bought <laughs> to take home. But I also, um, I did a lot of curating for that region. I, there's a lot of houses there with my paintings. I curated a uh, Margan's Wines, uh, their wine tasting room and um, their restaurant. And they also got some for their house. Yeah, it's definitely a beautiful place to go. Mm. And that painting actually makes me think a lot of, a lot of the Hunter Valley. And just the the want to just kind of escape, you know, get into that hot air balloon and fly somewhere, go somewhere exciting. What's the light bulb? Ideas and excitement. It's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great idea. The light bulb is a good idea. <laughs> yeah, the, the balloon is a light bulb. And that, that to me is like, you know, just, just go, but also just, it gives off light. You know, don't go into adventures with fear, go into them with excitement and, you know, just look for things that are, are going to make you feel like you're living. Mm. You know, don't live in the fear, just go for it. And that's sort of the feeling that that painting has. Mm. It's, it's all about adventure, mm. you know, exploring and, and enjoying it, you know, living. So. That's that one. The next one I would like to talk about is Living Forest. So this is a beautiful one. And oh, I, yes. I thought the other thing that's good about Esmeralda is if 
it's really lovely to commission a work. But of course, if you can't do that, you can also get uh, prints. Uh, she sells yes, prints. Yes, I do prints as well. And, yeah. and she signs them. So last Christmas, I bought two copies of Living Forest uh, from Esmeralda that she signed, one for my mother, one for my aunt in America, because I thought she might like to see a kangaroo. Because yes. <laughs> it's, <a> <laughs> it's in the forest and in the middle, there's like this kangaroo <laughs> looking into looking towards you almost like it's caught in the spotlight and maybe yeah. drive the painting. I, I did that one as a commission for a really lovely lady who had been to Tasmania and she described the experience uh, of walking through this beautiful forest. My interpretation of forests are that they have a life of their own. You know, they have their own energy. They're almost like beings but in a different form. And I had to put faces on the trees in the paintings, you know, to just sort of give them that character. You know, for me, hearing the wind through trees is like a language and they are talking to you. So that painting, as much as it was sort of inspired by Tasmania, it really can be any, any uh, forest or bush landscape that we have here in Australia anywhere. Uh, it's lush and green and there's so much to look at. Mm. So that painting is a lot of detail. That took me a few months. That was quite a big one. So yeah, there's, I like doing the big ones because I can put a lot more in them and the detail, you, you, it's like one of those things where you could be looking at it and then you see something that you hadn't seen before. You're always discovering something new. Mm. And it just made me yeah. think, I've always liked it and I just just now when we're talking it I realized that it reminded me of once uh probably about five years ago it was the day before I went back overseas and mm -hmm. I was with my mother and we decided to go for a bushwalk yeah. uh, and I just to get in the bush before I left and at one point I heard something I turned around and there was a kangaroo or well, it's a wallaby actually <laughs> That was oh, yeah. turned around and it looked at me in the eyes. It was kind of frozen. And we had this one moment, this intense moment. <laughs> and, then it, and then it bounded off. And I felt it was quite symbolic and spiritual. And, and then I felt like I was ready to go back overseas. I had the kangaroo spirit with me. <laughs> and yeah. it reminded me of that painting. Yeah, hmm. well, that's, that's the energy that I think that has, you know. There's, there's, a, there's a language out there, you know, in nature. And... Sometimes you just sit there and, and, I mean, they do say that you sit amongst nature to, re, to feel refreshed and to kind of, you know, recharge. Mm. And I think it's that nature, you know, that, that whisper from the leaves and the trees and, and the crackles that you hear, maybe there's an animal in there. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, there's, there's, a life, there's a life force. It's really quite special. Yeah, and I think it's important. I think it's very important for people to to just recharge in that kind of environment before they go back to, you know, whatever craziness they need to attend to. I find I submerge myself a lot in these works. You know, from my experiences, uh, I sort of put them in there. So there's a bit of me in all these works. Especially in the third and last painting we're going to talk about, self and creativity. Yeah, well, that was a self-portrait. This one I put into the Portuguese and that I, I always find self-portraits really difficult because it's so exposing. It's so exposing and you, you make yourself so vulnerable when you do a self-portrait because you're putting things in there that are very personal. And and I thought, you know, I, I want to express how I feel about what I do. And that's why I put like the frame and then there's a heart inside the frame which is almost like I'm exposing myself to everyone yeah so as and it's a woman or Esmeralda uh her the top of her head's cut off but then you can see a butterflies mm. from almost like a mask over her eyes yeah She's wearing a red like velveteen kind of cape yeah uh, robe yeah. and holding an open pomegranate uh, there's yes. flowers that you can see their roots uh, uh, the roots are coming down but beautiful white and pink and yellow flowers and then there's a frame a picture frame with a with a red heart uh, 
and the a veins, blossoming red heart. Yeah, yeah, and the veins are kind of like uh, roots of a tree also that are growing. Yeah. And, and there's something else that almost like strawberries or flowers that are growing from the heart. Orchids are coming out of the heart. And I think that the representation of the heart in a frame is, is just how when an artist puts themselves into a work, it's quite exposing. It reminds me a little um, bit of that, you know, the Frida Kahlo one when she's holding herself after her divorce and that she's holding oh, yes. hands with herself and one of them yeah. has a heart that looks like it's uh, very, a bit devastated and there's the vein yeah. is part. And, but this one's a lot more positive yeah. version. Yeah. <laughs> when you do a self-portrait, there is going to be a few elements that are a little dark because there is that vulnerability. There is that side that you don't like to show everyone and, and that you... I'm kind of scared to show everyone. So what um, does this one represent But you want you? to. Uh, for me, it's obviously like the passion and the love that I have for what I do and my wanting to expose how I feel through my art, which is the heart, and the blossoming is the creativity. The pomegranate is, you know, the pomegranates have been associated to new life like, you know, the seasons chain changes with uh, Persephone and Hades mm -hmm. and he gives her pomegranates like gifts, the symbols of love and life. So the, the seeds of the pomegranate are the seeds of life. Yeah, so it's, it's really quite, I love mythology. Mm. Mythology is brilliant. I get really engrossed in the stories of mythology. You know, I just, I just love the symbolism behind it. Mm. I do tend to paint them a lot. I mean, I love their texture as well. They yeah. look like rubies. Yeah, my uncle, it was his favourite fruit. He used to always have... Oh, it's beautiful. Garments. They're beautiful in salads. Mm. Oh, um, speaking of salads, uh, I wanted to talk about the, <laughs> some of the places that you like to relax in, and I know one of them because we went there and ate together. Ah, oh, Baba Ganoush. We had to go to Baba Ganoush, a it's Lebanese restaurant. I'll oh, do a God. link in the show notes, and there's... Yeah, um, we decided to go, and it was we we ate for two hours. We just kind of grazed for two hours. <laughs> the best petite salad I've ever had in my life. I dream about it. It's a bit out of town, but I'm telling you, it's worth it. We ate so well. Uh, oh my god! And the other thing you're also going to do, Esmeralda is an incredible cook, and she's going to um, also share a recipe with us. I think. <laughs> yes. I didn't even know Esmeralda was an artist. We just kind of got on really well. And then I went overseas after the Olympics mm. for a year and a half. And when I came back, I was invited to some of these big banquets you used to have at your house, which were wonderful. I used to love cooking. People and yeah. really good food. I don't know. You'd be whipping up all sorts of things. <laughs> yeah, I know. I remember I remember cooking those things. Uh, it was just a feast, really. That's, that's just what I wanted. I just wanted everyone to eat together and enjoy food. Mm. Food is a big thing for me. Yeah, a good quality, good food. You know, that, What's that to the me. Recipe that you're going to be sharing with us. There's a beautiful recipe which I, I grew up eating. It's basically corn wrapped up like you cook, you, you sort of puree the corn a little bit and you mix it with an egg and cheese and, you know, a bit of salt, a bit of garlic, and you, and you just uh, create like a, like a thick mixture. And you, you put it, you wrap it up in spinach leaves into these little parcels and then you foil them or you wrap them in banana leaves. If you have banana leaves, it's even better because banana leaves, then you can put them on the barbecue and cook them in, on, in a barbecue with the leaf and the leaf sort of smokes it a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> otherwise, you can, if you don't have banana leaves, you, can, you wrap them up in spinach leaves and then you wrap them in the foil and you, you boil them in a pot which is kind of a cheat's way of doing it, but it's, it's easy. And, uh, and you, you boil them and, and so they cook like that and then you unwrap them and you have these beautiful little parcels of corn, cheesy corn wrapped in yeah. spinach and oh, so good. And then you serve them up with like a... I'm getting like hungry. A, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> with like a capsicum chili relish on top. You know, like okay. a chutney type thing. You have to give us really the recipe good. for that and also the relish. I will. That relish is great. You can keep it in the fridge and have it with everything. You can have it with sandwiches oh. or, you know, whatever, roasted vegetables or whatever. You, like you could just eat it with anything really. It's beautiful yeah. with fruit. Delicious. What would Esmeralda's perfect day in Sydney be? 
definitely start off like breakfast in a cafe and then maybe go have lunch at the beach, you know, feed the seagulls, um, get into the ocean. Yeah, art gallery would be great. The birds, yeah, I've got, I have so many birds in the trees here. Two bellbirds, they sound like bells. White cockatoos. I also have rosellas here, lorikeets. I also have kookaburras. If you sit outside and you can listen to them all, it's really, it's amazing. Mm. There's so much bite. My grandmother used to impersonate the kookaburra. It was one of her party tricks. Oh, really? She's just out of it. <laughs> 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 it was, yeah, <laughs> Oh, you know what I really, I'm finding I'm really enjoying is the smell of growing produce. Yeah, you got a little like garden. I, I, yeah, like a little garden where you can grow your own herbs and your own produce is yeah. something I'm so enjoying. Like tomatoes, you know, they have such a scent. Mm. Um, yeah, that is a smell that I, I'm finding I really, really love now. Yeah. I, I never think- really thought about it before. Mm. lots of people's gardens benefited in these last 12 months yeah I think a lot of people have started you know appreciating where you know just the quality of food and and where it comes from I love watching the sun go down that to me is really beautiful and then after that you know go go out go eat out somewhere go see a band go see some live music uh enjoy you know some really great performances but the other sense that we can maybe finish on is the sixth sense your work is so intuitive and yeah uh, symbolic and it really reaches into another another realm uh Mm. some may call the sixth sense so maybe talk a little bit about that to finish okay it's a feeling um you have to be open to that though I think. I think that's the the trick to it. I think if you don't actually believe in it, it'd be hard for you to experience it. But if you do believe in things like that, then you kind of open yourself up to experiencing stuff like that. I guess I, I get a lot of that from my dreams anyway. Like I am open to that, those kinds of things. I have a real fascination to them. I think if you can't understand it, it doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. Yeah. I think it makes life interesting too. Mm. <laughs> How does your art touch people? I've had people receive the painting and and cry about it. You know, because it's moved them so much. Mm. That to me makes me know that I'm doing the right thing. You know, that that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm. Mm. They really do just jump out at you. Like, it's not just charming, it's there's something more, there's an energy in it. Yeah. And I know that you're a workaholic and you'll probably have to work tonight. How are you gonna <laughs> how are you gonna how are you gonna unwind at the end of the night? Are you gonna sit in front of your fireplace and let your crackle or what are you gonna do? You know, I enjoy singing. That's I really enjoy that a lot. Well, on that um, note, I think that um maybe we can have a listen to this lovely song. Do you wanna introduce it? It's a cover of um, a Hiatus Coyote song called Red Room. Uh, I just loved the tune of it. And I I like the fact that it's red. (laughs) Red is my favourite colour. So I was like, oh, I actually, you know, I can associate that to to my work. But um, it's just a cool, chill tune. And I I do find that I, I like to sing to keep my memory active, my mind active. Music is healing. So I do get a lot of enjoyment out of singing. The banquets we used to have at your house, we'd always finish with a big jam session. Yeah, there was always music. Oh my god, that was that was that was a no-brainer. That that's always going to happen, and yeah. I think that will continue. Let's have a little listen to finish this podcast with Esmeralda singing "The Red Room." <laughs> We hope you enjoyed this episode of Sense in the City, Sydney with Esmeralda Raven Ponte. Find Esmeralda's recipe for Colombian corn and spinach wraps and links to her artwork on senseinthe.city. 
I got a red room, it is a red owl when the sun sets in my bedroom. Feels like I'm inside a flower. I've got a red room, it is a red owl when the sun sets in my bedroom. Feels like I'm inside a flower. Feels like I'm inside my in the dot city keep up to date by following us on instagram at sense in the city sydney or you can find us on facebook at sense in the city world if you enjoyed this episode consider supporting the team on patreon or buy me a coffee you can find all the links in the show notes for this episode sense in the city is produced by ruby tv and palot media